temperature within the plant's environment can greatly impact growth rate. Talk to us about crop steering with temperature. Yeah, so again, fascinating um, uh, research coming out of, of Utah State University. I interviewed both Bruce Bugby and Mitch Westmoreland, two people who have been working on, on, um, on, um, with very sophisticated equipment um, to test, uh, con- do control tests of varying different environmental factors and seeing what the effect they have on both growth rate and yield and quality. And the temperature is particularly different, difficult to do because you have to have the same conditions but in separate rooms with environmental control and quite expensive to do as well. But they've done really extensive testing on a number of different cultivars and they've demonstrated well, there's two, two parts to it, I suppose. Uh, first of all, is is generally um, between about 20 degrees centigrade, so about 68 Fahrenheit and about uh, 26, 27 degrees centigrade, so about 85 Fahrenheit, um, is optimum for growth. Um, if you increase it in that range, you will get a higher growth rate. So the general idea is to uh, start warm, um, so you want to get again that get those plants to put out their canopy as quickly as possible. You want to get them to get up to as large a size as possible before you flip or before they start to flower. However, once buds start forming, um, buds are peculiar in that they're offensive, effectively like a, a ball of leaves, um, tightly packed together, and they have a difficulty in uh, losing their heat and also uh, losing moisture, so respiring, um, because there's a, a large density and a, and a small surface area rather than a leaf, which is a very low density and a high surface area. So these buds have a difficulty in, in get rid of, getting rid of heat and respiring. Uh, also, buds tend to be at the top, and they tend to absorb that bit of um, radiant heat coming from, in particularly if you're using HID, um, they can get they can be three four degrees centigrade you know five six degrees Fahrenheit higher than the temperature of the room um, because they're they're absorbing that heat but they're not able to expel that heat so what is is um, is advised now is to reduce down the temperature down around to that around twenty degrees centigrade or sixty eight Fahrenheit for the um, at least the second half of flowering, if not earlier. So once those those buds are starting to form and become dense. And what they've shown through extensive studies is that um, if you do run hotter than that, there's a very uh, steep drop-off in um, its ability to retain um, cannabinoids and um, fl- uh, terpenes and flavonoids. So effectively, the quality of your harvest will reduce um, if you're running too high a temperature in in the latter latter sort of half of flowering, um, and it's really dramatic. Um, it was it, it, unfortunately it's a little bit more it's a little bit layered because it does depend on strain and different strains um, are uh, tolerate different ranges of temperature. So there's sort of like a five degree centigrade range of of tolerance. So some will prefer it to be twenty five. Some will need to be down at twenty. Um, to retain that uh, that potency, but um, if you go if you go from say say the optimum in terms of, of retaining um, uh, uh, potency is at, at twenty degrees centigrade. If you go to twenty five, it can drop by over half. Um, so you can have a fifty percent reduction in the potency of your harvest if you're running five degrees uh, warmer. Um, than the optimum for the plan. So it's quite dramatic. Um, it was something that I used to hear a lot uh, anecdotally from growers. You know, you'd often hear, oh, I, I get a much higher quality harvest in winter, for example. Um, you know, in summer I struggle. Um, and, you know, there's an underlying reason for that. And they've now, there's now evidence to support that. But very interesting and very useful for growers to know. Difficulty for growers is another layer of difficulty for them is trying to get that temperature down in flower um, and trying to get it down to 20 degrees. You know, most people's homes 
will be over 20 degrees centigrade, you know, they'll be 22, 23 degrees where we find a comfortable, you know, 70, 75 Fahrenheit. Um, so, you know, it needs air conditioning effectively to cool it down. Uh, not um, possible for a lot of people, but there are some fairly easy methods of at least being on the lower end or as low as you possibly can. One of them is operating your light schedule at night. Um, so, you know, your, your, your house, uh, the air you're pulling in from outside, if you are, uh, will be cooler at night. So it gives you a better opportunity to, um, to, to bring that temperature down, um, and, uh, and high rates of airflow. So we do want humidity to be down as well in that second part of flowering. Um, and if you are doing that, you're probably pulling through air pretty quickly. Uh, through the tent um, and therefore keeping the temperature down but it's it's not possible for everybody all i would say is just try and keep your temperatures as low as possible for that phase of growing man 68 degrees fahrenheit for the second half of flower and that's probably eye-opening for a lot of people listening to this you know i've heard about lowering the temp towards the end of flowering the final couple weeks of flowering you know because like you mentioned the higher the temp the more terpene loss and flavonoid loss that's happening right it's just evaporating right it's going into the air but 68 degrees i mean that's 10 degrees lower than what was genuinely recommended so by me too by the way so i I would have been recommending that higher temperature up to very recently until i you know until i got this this new information and those studies are only they're not actually fully published yet um again the guys in utah state have released the information uh, Mitch University or Mitch Westmoreland from Utah State has done a few podcasts, including my own, where he's uh, he's shown his results um, with two different cultivars, and um, you know it's it's the evidence is plain and clear. So with the quality going up, yield has to go down. Was it measured like how much of a yield loss there is running that? Well, lower that's the interesting effect? thing. So. What they and I don't fully understand this, and I'm not going to pretend to. But what what I gathered from what I was told is that um, there's two things working against each other or for it, uh, whichever way you look at it. So the relatively lower temperature in flowering is it actually promotes the plant to push um, resources basically into the flowers. Um, so you may not get a, a high, a, a, a total mass of plant at the end, um, but you're pushing the plant to put its energy where you want it to, which is into the flowers with that lower temperature. Um, and there's less of an effect once you get into that sort of 20 to 26 degrees centigrade or sort of 68 to 75, 80 Fahrenheit. Um, the difference in growth rate um between the lower and upper range there is not huge. Um, so you're not losing that much in, in terms of mass of plant by reducing it at that stage. Um, and, and as I said, it's, 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 it's on, on balance, it's far more beneficial to have a, a lower temperature than a higher one. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowAt15 to save on any of their products. 